In this lesson, we finally get to start our scene. So let's go ahead and discuss, first of all, what we're creating, and then we can start working on it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit the number one so that we're looking at this in the front view, and the number five so that we're looking at it orthographically. Blender has a cool tool called Grease Pencil, which allows us to draw on the scene. So I'm just going to use that to draw a couple of uh, um, sketches here to demonstrate what we're trying to create. So I'm going to hit the draw key. And uh, what we're going to do is create a shape that is facing outwardly, meaning, you know, it's a, like a box. But the faces are going this way initially, at least. Right? However, instead of having a flat ceiling like this, we're going to have a curved one, an arched one. After that, once we've created this basic shape, and this is going to be uh, cubic, meaning it's going to have the same dimensions going uh, up and down, left and right, and front and back. We're going to select these polygons and flip them to face inwardly. So we'll take those out. And we can talk a little bit. These are called your facing normals. We'll talk a little bit about these in a different lesson. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to delete that. And we'll start our modeling. So uh, I'm going to hit the number 5. I'm going to hit Shift A to create a new cube. And the first thing I'm going to do is rename it. As a habit, it's really good to name your objects as soon as you draw them on the scene. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and adjust the size. So uh, we want this cube to be... Uh, five units wide, or uh, have a five unit radius, which means uh, it has, it's basically a 10 unit cube. So 10 this way, 10 this way, 10 this way, up and down. Um, the next thing I want to do is line it up to where the floor of the cube is on the floor of our scene. So I'm going to hit tab to enter edit mode. Edit mode allows us to select different portions, components of the our objects and apply those same transformations that we can in object mode. So here we can rotate it, we can grab it to move it, or we can scale it, right, to give us some, some unique shapes. What I'm going to do is go ahead and select this face at the bottom by hitting control tab selecting face and i'm going to grab it to make it snap to the floor so i'm just going to uh, constrain it on the z axis by tapping z and then holding control which makes me snap incrementally and at this point it makes me snap on the the actual grid and right there i'm sure it's exactly on the floor of our scene the next thing I want to do is adjust the height and make sure I'm happy with the size of it length and width wise, sorry, length and width wise, but I want the height to be uh, maybe a little bit taller. I'm not sure. We sh I need to look at it from a, uh, from a grid view. The way we can do that is we can manually rotate it to the front view and take a look at it like this. Or if we want to look at multiple views at once, we can also tap uh, this toggle quad view button and now we can see it in perspective view but also in our uh, orthographic views our front view our right view as well as our top view right now this menu is no longer helping me so i'm going to hide it by hitting the t key all right so right now this um this cube is one, two, three, four, five units high, right? Which makes sense because the radius we selected was five. I want this to be a little higher at about eight. Basically, I'm treating each unit here as a single foot, right? Um, it depends on who you're working with, but it's really important, uh, especially in, I mean, I guess in games as well as in animation, that you guys are working with similar units. That way, uh, objects are consistent between different artists. So whatever standard you guys choose, just make sure that everybody's adhering to them. Also working with specific game engines like Unreal or Unity typically have a 
specific unit that uh, you should be working with. You can look that information up pretty easily. All right, so let's go ahead and move this up. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Let's drag it up about three more feet. So we'll hit G, we'll constrain to the Z axis, and we'll go one, two, three. There we go. Uh, now I kind of lost focus of my object. If ever you you're uh, you know kind of really far away and it's hard to navigate back, you can hit the little dot key on the numpad, and it'll refocus the object. The next thing we're going to do is add the arch ceiling into our room. The way we'll do that is by first cutting this object in half. We'll do that by using a command called loop cut and slide. We access that by hitting Control R on our keyboard. What you'll see is a little preview of where it's going to be cutting it. You'll also see some commands down here that give you a little bit of instruction on what to do. For example, select a ring to be cut, use mouse wheel or page up or down for number of cuts, hold Alt for smooth. So you'll notice if I scroll my wheel up and down, it'll add cuts. I can also, instead of using that, use page up or down. And I can hold Alt to smooth it out, although that's not doing too much right now. So we'll go ahead and slice it in half. And then it'll allow us to slide it one way or the other. Now we don't want to slide it, we want it directly in the center. So to do that, we'll right click and it'll snap directly onto the center of the object. Now let's go ahead and deselect everything. So what we're going to do is select this one polygon and use a command called spin. This will rotate this uh, face around this point and give us a perfect arch. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and select this face and delete it. Then we'll go ahead and uh, select this edge and move our cursor to snap here. So we'll use Shift S, cursor to selected. Now the reason we need it here is because the rotation of the plane will be based off of wherever our cursor is. So we want to put our cursor right here. So this is essentially the hinge which it rotates around. The next thing we'll do is select the face. And this is the one we want to rotate. And we'll go here in our front view. The reason we go to our front view is because uh, spin by default will rotate around uh, the um, viewport you currently are, uh, are looking through. So if we rotate here, it's going to use this screen space. What we want is here, since we're facing straight on, it'll rotate this way. You can adjust it in the settings after the command, but this always makes it a little easier. After that, we'll uh, hit the command Alt-R, and you notice it goes ahead and executes the rotation. Now, uh, let's go ahead and look at our options for this rotation. We'll scroll down here. It asks us the number of steps, the angle, etc. And this is where we can change some things. But what we're going to do is adjust the angle here to be 180. Give it a full rotation. The other thing we're going to do is adjust the number of steps. We're going to set it to 12 steps, right? So we have six on each side. And then after that, we'll go ahead and exit the tool and execute our commands here in Blender. Now, by default, you'll see it created an extra polygon here that we'll have to delete. So we'll tap X, delete that face, and also it creates an extraneous edge. So we'll select the edge and delete the edge. Now, Sometimes it's a little tough to delete this edge. Uh, it's hard to figure out what to do. Usually what this means is that there's a polygon, an, ex an excess polygon somewhere around. So if we uh, click G and grab it, we'll see kind of where things are connected and what's going on. A good simple way to fix this is by selecting all of the objects in the scene, hitting Control V for the vertex commands, and then uh, selecting Remove Doubles. This will merge any vertex vertices that are close together. There we go. Now let's go ahead and select this edge again and delete it. And now it's gone. All right, so now we have the basic shape for our room. However, these polygons are actually facing outward, meaning if we go inside this, this room, even though we can see the polygons they won't actually render in a game engine or a, an offline rendering engine like Cycles. 
by default, unless we instruct the engine to, uh, these will show up transparent. Moreover, it causes issues with collision and um, just generally working with the polygon if your polygons are facing the wrong way. So what we want to do is make them face instead of outside to face inside. Now you may want to know how do you find out which direction they're facing. Uh, the way we do that is by looking at what's called our normals. So if we go over here in this right hand tab and select this button that says display face normals as lines, we can actually see which way they're facing. So here you can see that they're facing outward. But when we go inside, you don't see them. Another option we can do is go up here to shading and turn on back face culling, which basically means if the polygon is facing backwards, you won't actually see it. Okay. Let's go ahead, we'll leave back face culling on, but we'll turn our normals off. And then we'll select all of our polygons and we're gonna flip them. So we'll select all the faces by hitting A, we'll hit Control F, and we'll select Flip Normals. Now what you can see is that they're facing the inside and they're transparent here on the outside. It also makes some of our modeling a little easier. All right, so let's go ahead now and select the polygons we don't need. So because this is gonna tile in this direction as well as this direction, we don't need the front and back faces of this room. So we'll go ahead and select one and look at our uh, selection options because what we wanna do is very quickly select all of these polygons that are coplanar. So we can go to select, select similar, and we'll say coplanar. Notice we'll see here that there's a shortcut to it uh, that's shift G. So next time we'll use that one. There we go. We'll hit X, delete faces. There's that. And again, shift G, coplanar, X, delete faces. And there we go. Now we have the basic structure for our room. To wrap this one up, let's go ahead and add some modifiers to it so that it's mirrored on the left and right and it tiles going backwards. So what I'm gonna do is select one polygon, hold control and select another one and notice it selects all the ones in between. I'll do that one more time here to the center and I'm gonna delete one half. Now I'm gonna go ahead and apply a modifier by selecting this wrench um, icon. A modifier allows us to uh, procedurally add commands after the model is completed, like after our modeling. So if we add a modifier here called mirror, notice it mirrors whatever our shape is onto the other side. If I select this and move it, the mirror will adjust with it. On top of that, we'll add another command that makes this repeat so that we have a hallway. So we'll add another modifier called array. And we don't wanna uh, make an array on the uh, x-axis. We want it rather on the y-axis. Go, And let's go ahead and increase the number that we repeat. 